because they're pretty great at getting me to cry every five seconds. Hey friends, welcome back to another video. This past two weeks or so, I've been jumping headfirst into the world of the marches. It is March after all, so seemed like good timing. I have loved Little Women for my entire life, though my only exposure to this story up until two weeks ago was the 90s film starring Winona Ryder and Christian Bale. I grew up watching that film every Christmas and just loving that family and feeling so at home when I watched it. And I had a revelation this year in doing my reading challenge and thinking about classic novels I'd always wanted to read and hadn't made the time for and realized that I had never actually read Little Women the novel. So I decided that this month I would read the novel and finally watch the new 2019 film which to be honest I was terrified to go see because I <laughs> thought I'd hate it since it wasn't the version that I grew up with and the version that I adored. So even though I was really excited to see a new retelling of this story that I love so much, I was just terrified that I would hate it, that it would make me feel some type of way about my favorite sisters. So thinking about all this, I decided maybe it would be fun to do a little challenge where I read the novel, watch the new film, and re-watch the 90s film, and talk about my thoughts on all three. Will the new film and the book change my perspective on the 90s film? Will the 90s film reign supreme as the best version of Little Women ever created? Who knows? So I'm here to give you a completely objective 0% biased ranking of these three versions of Little Women, and don't even try to argue with me in the comments because I'm never wrong. Okay? Okay. Before we get too deep into the analysis of Little Women, I do want to thank my partner for today's video, Anna Luisa. As you'll know, I am an Anna Luisa partner, and they have sent me some gorgeous pieces this month, one of which I'm wearing right now. I'll do some close-ups so you can really see what I'm talking about, but these beautiful Riviera hoop earrings in my first holes match my Rebecca necklace that I got a few months back. These have a beautiful moonstone in the center and are, of course, brass plated with 100% recycled gold. They also sent me these hoops, which are a little more contemporary looking, which is why I chose not to wear them in this video, but are absolutely beautiful. Anna Luisa is a New York-based brand making sustainable jewelry with clean, low-impact, and recycled materials. They produce everything ethically, with respect to the people who make their jewelry and the environment. Many of Anna Luisa's pieces are brass, plated with 100% recycled gold, which has been repurposed from existing jewelry, industrial use metals, and electronic components, which is pretty awesome. Their sterling silver pieces are also 100% recycled. Their diamonds are sustainably grown and fully traceable and the perfect alternative to mined diamonds, which have a severe impact on the environment. On top of all of that, Ana Luisa practices transparent pricing, which as a consumer, I really appreciate from a brand. You can use the link in my description box for 10% off your order from Ana Luisa. Thank you so much to Ana Luisa for partnering with me on this video and for making beautiful, sustainable, ethically made jewelry. I also want to quickly mention that this dress I'm wearing is actually Little Women themed. This gorgeous mustard linen dress is made by Little Women Atelier, which is a very small clothing company that makes dresses based on the characters from Little Women. I am so grateful to have such a beautiful hand sewn piece that is just so gorgeous. So I will link them down below if you want to check out their dresses. They're absolutely beautiful. And it seemed incredibly fitting that I had just picked up this dress when I had the idea for this video and knew I would have to wear it. Also incredibly fitting that my nail polish perfectly matches the shade of this linen. As I mentioned in another video recently, this nail color is called Urbanized. It's from Cirque Colors and how perfect is that? I mean, do you see this color match? Amazing. Okay, so now that I've sufficiently rambled on, as I am wont to do in every video, let's talk about the three versions of Little Women. Okay, so I kind of want to start with the 90s film because that is the one that I grew up with. It's the one that I know the most intimately. So the 90s film 
is amazing. <laughs> Honestly, I have basically no faults to give it. I think it's wonderful. If you haven't seen the 90s version of Little Women, please go watch it. You can buy it on YouTube for like five bucks. I just feel that it is so well cast. Every single actor does such a beautiful job of portraying the characters as they're depicted in the book, as I now know, having read it. I especially love Winona Ryder as Jo. I love Kirsten Dunst as young Amy. She is a perfect Amy, in my opinion. Claire Danes as Beth is so quiet and tender and loving and good. I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> Sorry, this story is very emotional to me. So I grew up watching this. I was the younger of two girls, so I could relate to growing up with sisters, but I'd never had this experience of having such a full family. And I remember watching the film growing up and just thinking how lovely it would be to have even more sisters to play with and to have these kinds of relationships with. And while my sister and I are very close now, she's my best friend, I love her very much. When we were kids, we didn't get along very well, kind of like Amy and Joe. <laughs> and um, part of that is because we are very similar people, just like Amy and Joe. And I remember feeling lonely a lot as a kid and wishing that I had that kind of camaraderie, I guess. So I get very emotional and I feel very connected <laughs> to these characters. So I apologize if I start crying throughout this video. I'm trying to keep myself calm. But yeah, Susan Sarandon as Marmy is perfect. I just, I love the cast. Christian Bale as Teddy Laurie, he's awesome. There is something about the feeling of the 90s film that is so tender and simple and true. And for that reason, and because of the deep sentimental connection I have to it, I don't know if anything could ever fully beat it out as my favorite depiction of this story at least for the comfort effect that it gives. Because anytime I watch that film, I sob like a little baby and feel cozy and at home. And it's great. <laughs> um, so keep that in mind. As I said at the beginning, I am totally not biased to any of these <laughs> versions of Little Women, clearly. So onto the book, because I read the book next. The novel is incredible. And I'm really upset that I spent so much time not having read it because it is amazing. It is so worth the read of the almost 500 pages. There are so many more scenes that are included. Obviously, I mean, with any adaptation of a book to a film, you're gonna have to cut a lot out because otherwise you would have a very long film. But for some reason, I didn't really think about what those scenes would be and what that would do for the story. And you just get a much clearer image of who every individual character is. Even the four sisters who obviously are very well developed in the films because they are the primary characters. The story is all about the little women. In the novel, there's so much more detail into each sister individually. And that really helps to even deepen that connection that you feel to them. And what I really liked is on top of that deeper exploration of the sisters, you also get so much more about every other character. You get a lot more about Marmy, which really told a lot more about who she is as a person in sharing her flaws and not just showing sort of the glorified Marmy mother figure that you get from the films, more so because obviously the films are told from the perspective of the girls and they see their mother that way. And while the book is also told in that manner, you just get more of an insight into who Marmy is as a person. And she's a lot more spunky and fiery than you maybe would have the impression that she is from the films, at least the two film adaptations I've seen. Not that she isn't spunky or fiery in the films, but she definitely has a gentler, more subdued vibe to her, in my opinion anyway. I also really liked how much more we got about some of the more peripheral characters, especially Professor Bear and John Brooke, because in both film versions, you just don't get enough time with either of them to really connect. Obviously, they both try to make them seem like lovely men so that we'll be happy that they end up. Spoiler alert, by the way, I should have said this earlier. Spoiler for things that happen in Little Women, obviously. If you've never come across the story of Little Women in any version and you don't want to be spoiled, maybe stop watching now. 
So anyway, um, obviously we are primed to like Friedrich and John because they end up with Joe and Meg, but we don't get nearly as much detail, it feels, into who they are as people, especially John because he ends up with Meg and Meg is a little bit more removed from the story while still being obviously a major player. I loved the extra scenes with John Brooke. I feel like I got such a clearer picture of who he is and just fell to love him so much more. He is such a three-dimensional person in the novel and some of those bonus scenes, especially the one where they have the picnic early on in the first part of the novel with Teddy's friends from England. That whole section was really wonderful for the development of John Brooke and the early budding relationship between him and Meg. And then all of the scenes that were included of John and Meg prior to getting engaged and then once they were married and as parents were really, really lovely, especially one of the final chapters that focused on them specifically when they were struggling with having young twins and Meg trying to balance being a mother to twins and trying to dedicate her whole life to their care and also maintaining a relationship with her husband and you know nurturing that marital bond not just tossing that aside and focusing 100% of her energy 24 7 on her children and allowing John to become more of an active participant in parenting and the way that they go back and forth on methods of parenting and how their connection grows deeper and their love seems to grow deeper through their shared understanding of parenthood and how they can approach that together. And I just thought that was really lovely. Those little moments that weren't included in either film that I really felt added a lot to the story. Same thing with Bear. We don't get as much with him, obviously, because he comes in later in the story, but I did feel like there was a lot more detail into who he was as a person in the novel and his dynamic with Joe than we got in either film adaptation. In both films, to me, their relationship feels a bit rushed just because it really isn't given the time that we need to accept him as a good replacement for Lori, since we see her relationship with Lori develop for so long. And Amy and Lori's relationship is probably almost equally rushed in some people's minds, but we at least saw them interact as children throughout the whole film. So you really do have that sense of history and the fact that they did already love and care for each other. And you can tell from the beginning that Amy loves Lori as more than a brother. I don't wanna die. I've never even been kissed. I've waited my whole life to be kissed. And what if I miss it? I'll tell you what, I promise to kiss you before you die. And you can see sort of that moment when Lori shifts from loving her like a younger sister to recognizing that she is now a woman and realizing that he loves her as a woman and wants her to be his wife. So even though they sort of have as much time to develop their romantic relationships, it does feel like Lori and Amy feels more justified, I think, to the viewer than a lot of people seem to feel about Professor Bear and Joe, especially because in the 90s film and in the novel, Bear is much older than Joe. In the book, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, he's about 20 years older than Joe. In the 90s film, he's depicted as at least 10 years older. But in the newer film, which I guess I should get to, he is much younger, which is one of the things that I disliked about it. I know that it probably makes contemporary audiences a lot more comfortable. But I think part of what makes their relationship work in the novel and in the 90s film is that he is so much older. He is so different from Lori in every single way. He is a grown man <laughs> and an old soul on top of it. And it works very well to temper Joe's fiery, youthful spirit. They really complement each other very well. And I felt like that gravitas for him as a character was lost in the 2019 version where he was made to seem to be maybe a few years older than Joe. And I felt like that dynamic was missing, though there's nothing wrong with the actor who played him in the 2019 film version. I don't know his name. He was lovely, but just didn't feel quite right. So since I've started talking about the 2019 version, I feel like I should jump in. And I will say I avoided watching this for so long because I was worried that I would hate it and I didn't want to hate 
anything to do with Little Women. So I put it off watching it for a long time, but finally caved for this project. And I must say I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Now I will be honest and say that probably the first half of the film I wasn't on board. Some of that was probably my preconceived notions and my struggle to accept anything <laughs> other than the 90s film. But there are also I think some legitimate issues with the 2019 film in my view anyway. The way it was told in vignettes and flipping back and forth between the two sort of main time periods of the story in a pretty haphazard, sudden way was a little disorienting, even for me, who is quite familiar with the story and had just finished reading the book when we watched it. So I had it fresh in my mind. I was getting confused about what time we were in, though obviously they tried to make it clear with a color correction shift between their youth and their adulthood, which I did appreciate, but it was just very fast and disjointed. And even the order that they went back in time was odd to me because they did rearrange events and they combined a lot of events that have completely separate circumstances in the original story together into a single scene, which was weird for me because I know how they were supposed to happen, but also weird for me because I felt that kind of removed the importance of these disparate events that could have been wonderful moments in their own, but were kind of shoved into a single scene together and both of them walked away having less impact for it. So that's kind of how I was feeling at the start of the film. I was watching it with my husband who has seen the 90s film once because I showed it to him when I realized he had never seen it and was about to lose my mind over it. And he really enjoyed the 90s version, but that was a few years ago that we watched it. So he hadn't seen it for a while and that was his only introduction to Little Women. So he had forgotten quite a few of the details of the story. And he was pretty confused at the start of the film, I would say. Both of us were feeling a little disconnected. We paused about halfway through and I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was something along the lines of he didn't really care about any of the characters yet, which is one thing about Little Women that has always been really special to me is that you care about the characters so quickly because they are so honestly portrayed as complete three-dimensional humans with so many flaws as well as their strengths and their relationships are so complex that you can't help but fall for them and care about them. And I really felt like that was missing from the first half of the 2019 film. The second half, however, definitely grew on me, I would say. I do think that it improved in the second half. I don't know if the pacing shifted or I just got used to the way the story was being told. It did feel like moments were given a little bit more time to breathe, but that could have just been my perspective shifting. I did get very emotional watching it, to be honest, and I don't know how much of that was from the film itself and how much of it is just that I feel very emotional about many of the significant moments in a story because I do feel so connected to these characters. Who's to say? I will say that I loved the actor who played Mr. Brooke. I don't know his name. I should probably look it up. James Norton. James Norton. But he was amazing and I actually prefer him. I think he's the only actor that I love more than the 90s cast because as I said the 90s cast is really incredible. They are so perfectly cast but the Mr. Brooke in the 2019 version is just chef's kiss. So perfect so kind and gentle and loving and you can see that feeling he has for Meg from the beginning. I feel like his chemistry with Emma Watson was a lot stronger than the chemistry between Meg and John in the 90s film. It worked for me. I loved him. So a big thumbs up for the 2019 version, the casting of that actor and his chemistry with Emma Watson. So good. While we're talking about actors, let's talk about a few more. I think Saoirse Ronan was wonderful as Joe. She doesn't beat out Winona Ryder in my heart, but she did a wonderful job. I I think she's a very talented actress. I think she really embodied the spirit of Joe. So I think she did an amazing job. I also think Florence Pugh was an amazing Amy. She was maybe my favorite part of this 2019 film. She stood out in such a beautiful way in every scene she was in. The only drawback for me would be that her voice is so deep and rumbly and womanly sounding, which is great. Her voice is amazing. But 
she sounded far too old and mature to be a child. I have lots of wishes, but my favorite one is to be an artist in Paris and to do fine pictures and to be the best painter in the world. That's what- <gasps> Joe, that's so boyish. That's why I do it. Well, I detest rude and ladylike girls. Well, I hate in the flashback scenes, which kind of pulled me out of the story a little bit. And then the fact that Amy is played by two separate actresses in the 90s version, I think really works because she is so young at the start of the film that it really doesn't make sense for her to be played by the same actress. The older girls, it makes more sense because they are a little older at the start of the film, so you can kind of see it. And I think in the 90s version, they do a better job of showing their aging over time. So while I love Florence Pugh and I'm really glad we got to see her as both young and adult Amy, it did feel kind of weird, especially with her voice. But she's amazing. She was the best part of the movie. I want to watch everything she's ever going to be in for the rest of time. So that's that. Emma Watson was a lot better than I expected. I must be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of Emma Watson as an actress. She seems like a lovely human being. As an actress, could take her or leave her for the most part in what I have seen her in. <coughs> <clears throat> Beauty and the Beast. I was worried about her playing Meg. I think she did a lovely job. She did play her very young, I would say. She didn't feel like the oldest sister. I would say Jo felt a lot older than her most of the time, which was a bit of a weird flip. I don't know how I feel about that part of it, but I do think that she played Meg quite well. I actually think this is my favorite thing I've ever seen Emma Watson in, which is awesome. Editing Elizabeth here to add that throughout the entire film I kept wondering why Meg's coloring was so different from all of the other March women, only to discover after the fact that Emma Stone was initially supposed to play the part of Meg, which makes a lot more sense. So apparently Emmas are completely interchangeable in Hollywood? The more you know, I guess. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. Eliza Scanlon, who played Beth, I feel we didn't get nearly as much Beth in this film as you typically would in the story. Obviously she isn't around for as long in the story as the other sisters, but in the 90s version and in the book, I felt she had more of an active presence. And in the film, she sort of disappeared into the background a lot. While I still got incredibly emotional at the peak moments in her storyline, I didn't have quite the same connection to this version of Beth as I typically would, and as I do in the 90s film and now do in the book. On this topic, while talking about the sisters, especially in the young scenes, the way that they were overlapping their lines was very, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Distracting, I guess, or a little overwhelming. And I can see the intention behind it. I'm sure that Greta Gerwig wanted it to feel like a real family and that, you know, people aren't gonna wait for the other person to say something, even just being the younger of two sisters, I know that sisters will talk over each other and interrupt each other and just keep going and telling the story while the other one's talking. So that was realistic, but it made it very difficult to hear what they were saying. And because so many of us are used to how films typically handle lines and handle interruptions of lines and talking over each other in a more theatrical manner where lines typically are given more space so that we can understand as an audience, it felt very jumbled to me and I, I didn't love it well fast and rushed and overwhelming and then that part would end and I would have no idea what anyone said. Maybe I'm just old and curmudgeon -y. That is also a possibility. Moving on to Marmy. I love Susan Sarandon. She is my Marmy forever. There's nothing wrong with Laura Dern who played Marmy in the 2019 version. She was good. I just didn't really connect to her as much. I don't know what it is. Just didn't click as well for me. Maybe the chemistry with the actresses who played the daughters, I don't know. She did seem to maybe have less of an active role in the film. I would be curious to calculate the screen time discrepancies if there are any. Timothy Chalamet, this is the first time I've ever seen him in a film and he was good. I think he felt a little too cartoony and contemporary for me. I would say. He did a good job. I definitely prefer Christian Bale's Lori to Timothy Chalamet's Lori, and it's hard to put my finger on it, you know? But there's something, there's something about him that just felt very over the top, but not in the, not in the right way. I don't know. I can't, I can't put my finger on it. If you've seen both versions and you feel the same way, or if you disagree, I would love to know your thoughts, but it's really hard for me to express what it is, but there is something about the way that he portrays Laurie that feels too much. I don't know. I will say that Father March, being played by Bob 
Odenkirk. Felt weird. I don't know what it is about him. He also felt very cartoony and just didn't feel right for Mr. March. He's supposed to be a pastor or minister and he just didn't have that sort of quiet man of God feel about him. He felt like he was about to break out into like a scarecrow from Wizard of Oz silly dance at any moment which just didn't feel right for that character. I, I felt kind of uncomfortable when he was on screen, to be honest, and I don't know why. He just didn't feel right for who Mr. March is, even though Mr. March is quite a small character in the grand scheme of things. I already talked about James Norton as John Brooke. He was amazing. I love him. Louis Garrel, who played Friedrich Baer, as I said, seems like a lovely man. Seems like a good actor to me was not nearly old enough to play Bear in the way that he should be played in my humble opinion. Uh, I liked the Hannah in the new version. I thought she was great. I also loved the Hannah from the 90s version. Both lovely. I'm not gonna go through every single person. Uh, Meryl Streep as Aunt March. Mr. Lawrence, Chris Cooper. He felt very young for a Mr. Lawrence. And at first I wasn't sure when the first couple scenes he was in, I thought, oh no, 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 this isn't right. I don't like this. But by the end of the film, he just played with so much openness and honesty and the way they portrayed his relationship with Beth was just so sweet and tender and he won me over by the end so I thought he was lovely. He grew on me. He grew on me for sure. Oops my camera overheated. That's what I get for talking way too long about little women. Okay so now that I've talked through my thoughts on all three versions I do want to crown a winner. The ultimate crown of glory has to go, has to go to the 90s movie. I don't know if there was any way that any version could ever knock that version out from the top spot in my heart, in my soul, in my mind. That's just my little women. Those actors are those people in my head. And as much as the actors in the new film did lovely, lovely work, honestly, incredible work, I don't know if they could ever usurp the position that the 90s film holds for me. So 90s film, congratulations, big winner, all the prizes, all the love, all the win. As for second place, I have to give that to the book. I just do. The book almost, almost knocked the 90s film out of the top spot. It is so lovely. It's so well written. There are so many extra bonus little moments lovely scenes that give us so much more insight into every character and just give us more to love about this little family and these little women. And I just, I'm gonna reread this book about a million more times in my life, just you watch. Um, I gave it five stars on Goodreads. Second place to the book, a very, very close second, such a close second, just lovely. And that makes it pretty clear that in third place comes the 2019 film as I had expected, though a much closer third than I ever would have guessed. I actually really enjoyed this new version of the film and I will rewatch it for sure, many times probably. Not as many times as the 90s version, that is to be sure, but I'll definitely be rewatching it and sharing it with my family a really, really lovely retelling of the story and much more poignant and heartwarming than I could have hoped. So all in all, a great experiment. I love all three versions of the story and will partake in all three repeatedly forever whenever I'm in need of comfort or a good cry because they're pretty great at getting me to cry every five seconds. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I did this little experiment. I'm glad I did it this month because especially in the past week, which is sort of the second half of my experiment here, I've been in self-isolation. Not because I think I've been exposed to the virus, but because I do already work from home and I decided to just take myself out of the equation and stay home. So I haven't left my house in about a week and a half now. And I've been feeling a little stir crazy and a little anxious all around. So diving headfirst back into a world that I grew up with and that feels so safe and feels like home, has really helped with all of the stress and uncertainty of this time. So I would recommend, even if this story doesn't have sentimental or nostalgic factor for you, even if you didn't grow up with it, 
I'd recommend checking out either one of the films or the book at this time if you, like me, are stuck at home and starting to go a bit stir-crazy because it is just such a heartfelt story and maybe it will help you feel comforted as it has for me. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm sure it's all over the place. I'm sure it's longer than it has to be. I'm sure it's rambly, but it comes from the heart. It was fueled by my passion and love of this world, of this story. And if you haven't checked out Little Women, I hope you will after this video. And if you have, I would love to know what versions of Little Women you have consumed, which are your favorites. If you've seen all three that I talked about in this video, I would love to know your ranking. Please let me know in the comments down below. I'll also make a little poll here in the cards so that we can just get a good percentage of who votes for which one. But please leave a comment too, because I would love to know your reasoning behind it. I would just love to keep discussing Little Women with you in the comments, because as you can tell, I have a lot to say and uh, I could keep talking about this for a very long time. So indulge me, please. Let's chat in the comments. Thank you again to Anna Luisa for partnering with me on this video. Remember, you can use the link in my description box for 10% off your purchase. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you are all staying safe and healthy. Wash your hands, stay home if you can, and I will see you very soon in my next one. Bye, friends. P.S. Let me know in the comments which sister you relate to most. I'll also put a poll for that here, but I want to know why you relate to which sister. I did a poll on Instagram and Joe won by a landslide, but I personally have always related to Amy. So let me know what you think. Chewy, don't do that. Don't do that. Chewy. I'm just trying to knock my camera over. <laughs> Stop. Chewy. Stop. What are you doing? Hey. Stop. Stop. But I personally have always related to Amy, and I think she's a lot more like Joe than people give her credit for. They're both super creative and fiery and passionate and independent, and they know what they want, and that's why they fight so much, because they're so similar. So I love Amy. Anyway, I would love to know in the comments which one you relate to more and participate in the polls so we can get some fun data from all this. And that's all I'm gonna go before I talk forever and because my cat is trying to pull my whole tripod down right now and he's turning it away from my face. Chewy, stop. Oh my goodness. This is a disaster. I need to go, goodbye. Goodbye everyone, I love you, stay safe. Chewy. I wanna take a moment to thank my patrons for their support. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons, Rachel, Mega, Jana, Oksana, and Regina. Welcome all of you to the squad. Thank you so, so much for your support at this time. And if you at home want to join the squad, there's a link in the card and in the description box down below. If you're looking for something else to watch, I recommend you check out this video or this video.